Who are these nobodies up here to make fun of you? You're an inspiration. Uh, you prove that having no talent can be seen as hip and ironic. You greasy Greek bastard. We shouldn't be drilling in Alaska. We should be wringing out your family's pillowcases. You used to look your age. Now you don't even look your species. Lisa Lampanelli, keep it going for that guy. Wasn't he funny? Seriously. Wasn't he fucking hilarious? I love the, the pink camouflage, Lisa. You're like General Fatten. <laughs> Holy shit, look at you, you fat cunt. Who knew Lane Bryant's had an army? <laughs> Lisa actually has a lot in common with that octo mom, that woman that gave birth to all those babies. She's never given birth, but she has had 80 fingers inside her at the same time. <laughs> 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 Look at this pack of slobs up here. Gary Busey's here, kind of. How about Gary? Yeah! Gary, I guess, flew in from Lobotomy Island. Jesus, Gary, you horse-faced lunatic. You look like, you look like Nick Nolte fucked a Clydesdale. Your teeth look like a row of urinals. Look at yourself. Every time you talk, I want to piss in your mouth. And I don't, uh... Warren, what the hell are you doing here? Holy shit, Warren was, he was great on Dancing with the Stars. He came in second and then celebrated by dragging his partner to the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> it's great to see Toby Keith. Toby, I'm glad you could take time out from spitting on Mexicans to be here, Toby. Uh, Toby, you put the big in bigot. I loved your last song, Get Out of My Country, You Camel Jockey, Wetback Faggy Spook Jew. And uh, Marsha Brady's here, Maureen McCormick, huh? How about that? Holy shit. Marsha Brady, you wrote in your book that you used to trade sex for drugs. Holy shit. As a kid, I used to fantasize about having sex with you. Who knew all I needed was an eight ball in a bus station bathroom? <laughs> and speaking of bathroom stalls, where's that redneck fruit Jeff Foxworthy? There he is. Jeff, you look like Magnum P.I. with AIDS. My buddy, uh, Nick DiPaolo's here. Nick, look at you, you big hunched over guinea. You're like Fonzie with spina bifida. <laughs> and Reno Collier, I don't know who or what that is. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess he's part of that next wave of lowbrow dipshits that'll make me want to kill myself. Or, or maybe he's just here so Lisa Lampanelli wouldn't be the only fat lesbian hack on stage. <laughs> and now, uh, on to uh, Larry, the cable guy. This, this is exciting, I gotta tell you. I I've never roasted a fake character before. Maybe next year we can roast SpongeBob SquarePants. Larry's, Larry's whole act is a sham, like the Bible or the Holocaust. Some people say Larry's only successful because he's pandering to the lowest common denominator and blatantly and non-ironically exploiting people's racist and homophobic tendencies. Don't listen to these people, Larry. They're just bitter and jealous and right. You inbred hillbilly. <laughs> You've been inside more farm animals than Purina. You're like the Trojan army. You're big, patriotic, and you both came inside a giant horse. You gravy sweating cousin fucker. Larry fucked his first cousin when he was 16, and his last one about an hour ago. <laughs> you lost 50 pounds on Nutrisystem and another 10 when you shaved your back. How the fuck are you so popular? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, this one finally broke my back. Your fans can't even afford cable. They're not coming because they think you're funny. They're just, they've never seen a cable guy. You could have come up with other characters your fans have never seen, like Larry the Dentist, or Larry the Librarian, or Larry the High School Diploma. Thanks for letting me roast you, uh, Larry. You, you make more money in a week than I'll make in my life, and, uh, and that feels good, I gotta tell you. You say you've never done drugs, but watching your success has put me in rehab twice. So uh, thanks for ripping my soul out, you hillbilly fuck. Donny Osmond, everybody, wasn't she funny? What a f***ing bore, holy shit. Well, you know what, I do, I do love that, that Stewie character on your show, he, he's great. Uh, you, you made all your money because you created a, a f***ed up criminal baby. You're like Michael Lohan. How, how, uh, how, how, how 
cheesy is this dais? How cheesy is this dais? It's not a roast, it's a melt. Jerry Springer, George Hamilton. Look at these no talent success stories. The devil has signed so many deals with you people, he's got carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> Pam Anderson is here, everybody. I hope this isn't too direct, Pam, but God, I, I've jerked off to you a lot. Uh, you, you've, you've caused me to spill more seed than Muhammad Ali at a bird feeder. <laughs> Pam, you, you have a... You, There's a compliment there somewhere. George Hamilton. <laughs> You're like, you're like Tang. You're dry and orange and no one has given a about you since 1968. <laughs> Hamilton, you're like a walking tumor. Not exactly, it's a big deal when you spot a tumor. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a roast without Pizza Lampanelli here, everybody. Lisa Lampanelli. Good to see you, Lisa. I've never seen a circus bear in a pantsuit before. <laughs> and you know what? Lisa, Lisa seems, she seems very confident, but she's actually not, she's very sweet. She was telling me backstage that she had knots in all four of her stomachs. The, you are, you are one fat lady. You, you have, you have more chins than a Chinese fat chick with tons of chins. Cause she's, cause she's so fat. And also a And speaking of fat Hulk Hogan's here, everybody. How about that? Hulk, I can't imagine why your wife left you. You're an old man who dresses like a Hooters waitress. <laughs> keep, keep your shirt on, bitch tits. You're 80. You had a reality show called Hogan Knows Best. It should have been called Hogan Grows Breasts. <laughs> Sorry, Springer, good to see he slithered in here today. Uh, Springer, you, you cultural sodomite. You, you have fist our civilization like Gilbert's uncle on Valentine's Day. <laughs> You're an aide to Bobby Kennedy, which probably explains your connection to Hasselhoff. I guess you like to hang around guys whose careers end on a hotel floor. Oh. You've done, that's a good joke, everybody. It's what we call roasting. Anyway, I'm sorry if the meanness is piled up, but that's what we do here. And now, on to the man of the happy hour. One more hand for the Hoff, everybody, huh? The back hoff. David Hasselhoff, what a legend. Hasselhoff's, Hasselhoff's sitting on a lifeguard chair because that's what you're most known for. I guess when we roasted Pam, she should have been sitting on a dick. We're... <laughs> that, is, that is quite a tuxedo. You look like Adam Lambert's prom date. You're, you're huge in Europe. You're even knighted by the Queen of England. She dubbed you cirrhosis of liver. <laughs> Hasselhoff, have you, have you ever not been drunk? You used to have a car that started when you talked to it. Now you have a car that won't start when you blow into it. <laughs> You're such a drunk. When alcohol does its taxes, it lists you as a dependent. <laughs> You're... <laughs> yeah. 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 You starred in Jekyll and Hyde on Broadway. Give him a round of applause for that. It's excellent acting. You, you, played a guy, you played a normal guy who drinks something and then turns into a raging, abusive asshole. What impressive range. Maybe, maybe for your next big leap, you can go out for the part of washed up, drunken cheeseburger eater. <laughs> Hustle off, you drunk <laughs> You drink a lot, right? <laughs> your liver is so shriveled, black and dead, if you put your ear to your side, you can hear it go, what you talking about, Willis? Haslov, you're a good man, you're a good dad. Congratulations on being honored here tonight. I know you're taking a lot of shit, but, uh, but you're not gonna remember any of it. Let's face it, it's not. <laughs> Thanks. John Stamos, isn't he, she great? John played the bongos in a Beach Boys video wearing a pink tank top. That couldn't have been any gayer if George Michaels was on your lap stuffing crystal meth up your ass with Rupert Everett's fist. You're on ER now, John, congratulations. You're like Susie Essman's vagina. You're almost useless, but somehow you keep working. John was, uh, John was married to my favorite supermodel, Rebecca Romaine O'Connell. Jesus. Holy. John, you, uh... John, 
you lost your wife to the fat kid from Stand By Me. <laughs> Holy shit. Look at you, you greasy Greek bastard. I look at you and I wonder, how can there be an energy crisis? We shouldn't be drilling in Alaska. We should be wringing out your family's pillowcases. <laughs> Norm MacDonald is here, one of the funniest people ever. Norm's got a giant gambling problem. He's dropped more coin in a casino than Michael J. Fox at a parking meter. <laughs> it's a fucking roast, groany, groan, groan. Brian Posehn, look at him, that giant fucking ghoul. <laughs> We've all seen you shirtless on the Sarah Silverman show. It's hard to believe you could be so out of shape considering how often the townspeople must chase you around with torches. <laughs> the great Cloris Leachman, of course, is here. Cloris Leachman. Floris is so old, she lost her virginity to a druid. <laughs> what are you doing here, Cloris? You're the only person with any talent. You won an Oscar and nine Emmys. When it comes to winning awards, you've been more voracious than John Lovitz at an all-the-dick-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> John Lovitz, you fucking gay weeble. Come on, John, there hasn't been a more feminine Jew in the closet since Anne Frank. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey's here. Gilbert recently had a baby. Who would fuck you? You have the sex appeal of a school bus fire. <laughs> Which brings me to the man of the hour, Bob Saget, everybody, huh? Bob Saget. Bob, Bob, you are a genital wart on the cock of American culture. <laughs> Seriously, who gives a shit about Bob Saget? With your long neck, pointy beak, and granny glasses, you're like the Vlasic pickle stork. <laughs> Except instead of delivering babies, you're not funny. You're like my seven-year-old son. You think cursing is hilarious, and you're not surprised your dick is the same size it was in the first grade. <laughs> and where the hell are the Olsen twins? The Olsons are like Tom Green's testicles. They look the same, but one is fake and empty inside, and the other one's been licked by Heath Ledger. It's, he'd be cool with it, fuckers. I read an interview where you referred to yourself as an artist. Are you fucking kidding me? As an artist, you use the phrase as an artist. You are a vortex of artistic compromise. Charlie Sheen watches you and feels good about himself. <laughs> you, you are an artist in the same way Cloris Leachman is moist. <laughs> You're not an artist, Bob, and stop enjoying your ironic hipness that's going on with you these days. You're not cool. Stop trying to be hip. At one point in your act, you actually say, who's your daddy? Say my name, look me in the eye, true dad. <laughs> Holy fuck, I couldn't cringe any harder if I watched my mom in a Bukaki video. <laughs> I'm done being mean, Bob. I've, I've met you a bunch of times. You've always been hilarious and super cool, and, uh, and everybody that knows you loves and respects you. Nobody ever has a bad thing to say about you, and uh, that's, that's, that's particularly surprising because you're, you're Jewish and you're obnoxious people. Thanks a lot for letting me do this, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, thanks a lot. Uh, Ron White, isn't he drunk? Everybody, give him a hand, seriously. It oh, looks like uh, Nick Nolte let himself go. How about a hand? Before I get to Foxworthy specifically, I wanna talk about all the blue collar guys. These guys are like, they're like rock stars. And by that I mean old and boring and loaded with syphilis. The tour grossed 15 million bucks, 15 million. You know, this is at a time when your fans have so many other entertainment options. You know, they, they could have stayed home and burned a cross or <laughs> their sisters or, you know what I mean? They had other choices, you know, but instead they got, they got all gussied up in their best who farted t-shirts and they, uh, <laughs> they jumpstart the El Camino and they take the hard earned money that they made on an extra shift working the Tilt-A-Whirl or robbing a liquor store and, you know, this is money they could have spent on abortions or crystal meth, and they come out, they, they make an extra effort to come out and see you guys. 
Now, uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of abortions, uh, good to see Larry the Cable Guy here. <laughs> Jesus Christ, get her done. I saw Larry at the beach, because we hang out at the beach, me and Larry. And I, uh, I saw, from behind, all you see are rolls of fat and clumps and patches of hair. Your back looks like Lisa Lampanelli's <laughs> Seriously. Good to see uh, Bill Engvall here. Bill, he's a prolific bastard, man. He's got seven comedy CDs out. Without Bill, Sears would have no comedy section. <laughs> Seven CDs. Bill, did you ever think of just saying something unfunny without recording it? <laughs> now, uh, my friends from Tough Crowd are here, of course, Colin Quinn, and uh, I noticed recently Blue Collar TV took over Tough Crowd's time slot. And uh, the network told Colin that viewers had a hard time understanding anything he said. And uh, so they replaced him with Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Now, my, my buddy Nick DiPaolo's here, and uh, you know, a lot of people say Nick's just a big, dumb guinea. Anyway, on to our uh, guest of honor. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Jeff Foxworthy, folks. Uh, you know, Jeff has always been an original and an innovator. You know, back when everybody was doing corny, observational comedy, Jeff came up with the idea of doing it in a southern accent. <laughs> Very original, a good twist. You are to comedy what Wayne Brady is to black people. <laughs> I've seen you dance. You ever watch that blue collar TV when he dances at the end? Holy <laughs> Remember how G.E. Smith, how spastic he looked on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> you make him look like Barishnikov on ecstasy. <laughs> You've always stayed cutting edge, man. You really have. Uh, with that Keith Partridge haircut and that, that ferret growing on your lip. <laughs> Jesus. That mustache should come with ass chaps and a nipple ring. <laughs> what are you thinking? With your wardrobe and that gay walrus mustache, you look like one of the village people on Casual Friday. <laughs> you, look, uh... <laughs> you look like a guy Tonya Harding would <laughs> in a 78 Nova. <laughs> you put out 11 books, including a cookbook. You got greeting cards and slot machines. You're like the redneck Martha Stewart with a smaller You are a billionaire. You're like Donald Trump without the funny TV show. <laughs> Seriously, Jeff, though, you're, you're a giant comedy star. You deserve your success. And, uh, and look, you made enough money that you don't have to live in the South, but you choose to. So you're, uh, you're, you're the real deal. Congratulations, man. Kathy, you look like Ronald McDonald's <laughs> Lucille Ball's corpse then pushed it down a flight of stairs. <laughs> Holy shit. What's with all the surgery, Kathy? Lord, you've been stitched up thousands of times, but you're still sad to look at. You're like the AIDS quilt. <laughs> what a night! A couple of trolls, a fairy, and a giant all going after a sunken-eyed little monster who's obsessed with jewelry. It's like the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the, uh... The great Carl Reiner's here. This is very exciting, yes. Carl. Carl! <laughs> you are such a comedy icon that Joan named one of those shitty watches she sells on QVC after you. It's, uh, it's the Carl Reiner edition. It's got liver-spotted hands and it's running out of time. <laughs> Mario Cantone is here. <laughs> Mario! You are one tiny, loudmouthed fairy. Your father must have been devastated when you came out of the cupboard. <laughs> Brad Garrett from Everybody Loves Raymond, huh? Holy shit. You are a fucking monster, Brad. How'd you ever get your head so far up Ray Romano's ass with those bolts in your neck? And Whitney, Whitney Cummings is here for some reason. I, I guess, uh, I guess since Kathy and Joan have huge gay followings, we needed someone with no following. <laughs> Whitney, Whitney's a girl who obviously knows the answer to the question, hey, who do you have to blow to get on one of these roasts? <laughs> and speaking of degrading yourself sexually to get ahead in show business, Tom Arnold is here. Yeah! Tom. 
It is great you can take time out from being Roseanne's ex-husband to be here. <laughs> Tom, you twitchy spaz. <laughs> Joan, actually named <laughs> another one of her shitty watches after you, too. It's the Tom Arnold that never stops ticking and used to come in a giant hairy box. <laughs> and finally, finally we get to comedy legend and irritating Jewish lady, Gilbert Gottfried is here, everybody, huh? <laughs> Gilbert! Holy shit, Gilbert, you look like you smell like pee. <laughs> and Gilbert's famously cheap. Uh, I'm impressed you're here, Gilbert, you know, because, uh, you know, when you do these things, you gotta buy new clothes, you gotta take a week off from work, but you showed up, you tightened your belt and you came. You're like David Carradine. <laughs> and... <laughs> yes. A sympathetic figure, if ever there was one. <laughs> and now, it really is my honor to talk about comedy great Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers, everybody. <laughs> this is exciting. Joan, you are one irritating Jew broad. The first time I heard your voice, my foreskin fell off. <laughs> what have you done to your upper lip? Did you blow a beehive? <laughs> Holy shit, you look like Steven Tyler f the life raft. Seriously, I, and you're not the only one here. All these rubber face monsters. What the f***? What, what, what goes into people's heads out here? Why? Did you really? Really? Is that good? What, how much worse could your real face look than that clown mask you've had welded on your head? You, you used to look your age. Now you don't even look your species. You, you, you once said you succeeded by saying what everyone else is thinking, and that's not true. It's not true. I never heard you say, holy shit, what the f did I do to my face? I look like a surprised catfish. <laughs> Joan, you really are an absolutely incredible uh, talent. You're absolutely hysterical. Every comic I know respects you. That's the God's honest truth. Everyone thinks you're hilarious. I think you're the best. And at your age, you're still relevant, still cool, and uh, shit, you even got a, a boob job just a few years ago. You're every man's dream. And, and by that, I mean every man that dreams of titty fucking a crocodile. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you, Pillsbury Jew boy. <laughs> Jason, that was, a, that was a refreshing change. These days, the only time you're funny is on a rerun. <laughs> you've done, uh, you've really tried to hang in there after Seinfeld. You had shows like Bob Patterson and Listen Up. Those shows disappeared faster than a bowl of Percocet at Farrah Fawcett's house. You've been in more turds than Andy Dick's penis. <laughs> Look at his dais. Fat guys, old ladies, and an Asian. I feel like I'm on a bus to Atlantic City. <laughs> Look at this. Nichelle Nichols, Farrah Fawcett, and Betty White. Uh, I'll take women I would masturbate to 30 years ago for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> what a uh... What a uh... What a cruel joke. Three women you'd want to fuck 30 years ago, and one I wouldn't fuck 30 beers from now. <laughs> Artie Lang, you... You... You fat, drunk slob. <laughs> Artie, your liver has more holes in it than Mel Gibson's apology. <laughs> you're, uh, your liver's so black, Lisa Lampanelli tried to get it to fuck her up the ass and never call again. <laughs> Artie, your pal George Takei is here. Uh, sorry to pick on you, George. Uh, I know it couldn't be easy uh, being a gay Japanese man in the 50s. I mean, it, it had to be almost impossible to pronounce glory hole with a Japanese accent. <laughs> to our guest of honor now, the great, uh, the great William Shatner, everybody. Hi, William. <laughs> Bill, it's, uh, that, was, that was quite an entrance. When I, when I heard someone was gonna come on a horse, I, uh, I thought, wow, the network's really gonna let Andy Dick and Lisa Lampanelli get away with murder. <laughs> but.
Bill, uh, you're not just uh, brilliant and old and fat. You're, you're an inspiration. Uh, you prove that having no talent can be seen as hip and ironic. You overact more than Betty White's bladder. <laughs> wow. Then, uh, then, of course, there was T.J. Hooker. The only thing I remember about that show was your hair and that hot chick, what's her face, Adrienne Zemed. What, uh, what happened to her? You're a, uh, you're a humanitarian. You work with a foundation to bring peace to the Middle East, and uh, whatever it is you're doing, keep it up. Because it's uh, really working. It's really working. You know, uh, so one of the most surreal parts of this business is, is that I get to stand here and make fun of, of a legend like you. You're an enormous part of my youth, and you made Captain Kirk larger than life. And really, honestly, no actor who's ever lived could have, could have done more with that role. And, uh, and the fact that you're, you continue to crank out the best work you've done today when statistically you, you should be dead is, <laughs> is really, really inspiring. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Jimmy Kimmel, isn't he doughy? Really. Isn't he, isn't he about to be canceled? Keep it going for... Uh, for Jimmy Kimmel. Wow, that was, that was great, Jim. I've never seen you be funny on TV before. <laughs> Jimmy, how the hell is that show still on the air? That, was, that, that wasn't a premise to a joke. That was a real question. Uh, I don't want to say nobody watches it, but more people have seen Dennis Rodman reading. <laughs> By the way, Pam, Kid, Kid Rock wanted to be here, but he got stuck in a 20-year-old. <laughs> Corolla, look at you, you horse-tooth bastard. <laughs> Corolla, you got a mouthful of two-by-fours. Every, every time you smile, I remember to waterproof my deck. <laughs> Corolla's an Italian word. It means one eyebrow. <laughs> the love lines. Only in America. What a crappy show The Love Lines is. Yeah, teenagers calling in to complain about their abortions and their anal warts. It's like listening to the messages on Andy Dick's answering machine. Now, uh, speaking, uh, speaking of anal warts, uh, good to see Courtney Love here. Courtney, uh, what the hell happened to you? you? You had a great band, you're a very talented actress, and your career dried up faster than Sarah Silverman's pussy around guys who can't help her in the business. You... Good to see uh, Eddie Griffin, of course, Eddie Griffin. People said there wouldn't be any big movie stars here tonight, and they were right. Tommy Lee, of course, it's tough to slam a guy for having a huge cock, but we've all seen a sex take, Tommy, and I know the camera adds five inches, but Jesus, your cock is so huge, I had to fast forward the tape to see all of it. My five-year-old son walked in as I was watching it. Great, now I gotta explain why the pretty blonde girl is being stabbed with the harpoon. Of course, uh, that brings me to Pam, the beautiful goddess. Hi, Pam. Pam, uh, Pam, I, I love you, Pam. I've been a fan of yours for so long, but I gotta say, watching you in that sex tape was like a whole new experience for me, uh, because up until then, I'd never seen anyone get gonorrhea before. <laughs> that, that was weird. You're a vegetarian, but you have no trouble swallowing a moose cock. <laughs> You're environmentally conscious, but you've caused more seed to be spilled in the Department of Agriculture. I've been a fan of yours for so long, and I, I feel terrible that you're gonna get abused here today. Who are these nobodies? Who are these nobodies up here to make fun of you? People like Lisa Lampanelli. I'm sure she's gonna come up here and, and be mean and fat, and... But you know what? But you know what? Fuck her. You've been on the cover of Playboy so many times, and you didn't have to fuck Hugh Hefner to do it. You fucked him anyway, but you didn't have to. That's right. You didn't have to. 
You're multi-talented. You have a TV show. You're involved in lots of humanitarian causes. You've even uh, written two novels. You're busier than Courtney's pharmacist. <laughs> what's, what's with the books, Pam? You have two novels out, two novels. You've now written more books than you've read. <laughs> I, I love your show, Stacked. It shows your range and it proves to everyone that you can masturbate to a sitcom no matter how unfunny it is. <laughs> I love it, Stacked, you get it? It's a double entendre. Yeah, you work in a bookstore, there's stacks there and you're stacked, so we call it Stacked. That's hilarious. I love that. Okay, here's the idea, guys. She, she, she works in a jewelry store, and we call it Pearl Necklace. What do you think? <laughs> you starring in a show about books and reading is like Tom Cruise starring in a show about vaginas. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, now, I will say this, Pam. I am seriously a, a giant fan of yours, and, uh, you know, we're gonna make fun of you a lot here, but to get to the level you've gotten is true genius. It really is absolute genius. People cannot help but love you. People can't help but love you. You got unbelievable talent, and you're America's sweetheart. You're a Canadian, but those tits were made in America. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Keep it going for Cat Williams, everybody. Isn't he adorable? What a cute little kind of person he is. <laughs> Holy shit. Cat, you're like Afro Sheen. Some white people have heard of you, but no one knows what you do. <laughs> Teeny little pimp. <laughs> Man, being a pimp ain't easy, especially when you gotta stand on phone books to smack a bitch. <laughs> uh, this is great. Cat Williams, Flava Flav, Snoop, Ice Tea. There's so many black dicks up here, I feel like we're doing this roast in Lisa Lampanelli's mouth. <laughs> Face it. Ice T is here, holy. Ice T, you fucking fossil. <laughs> holy shit, you're so old, the first thing you bought with your record deal money was your freedom. <laughs> On your first album, the N word was Negro. Some more is here. Some more when it comes to movies, maybe you should do some less. <laughs> Soul Plane, holy shit. That was such a horrible embarrassment to black people, Brigitte Nielsen tried to f it. <laughs> Brigitte Nielsen's here, good to see you sitting up, sweetheart. I, uh, I guess you're in rehab and I, I, really, I really hope that works out for you, but uh, but seriously, if you want to stop repeating the disgusting things you've done in the past, why don't you just get your pussy sewn shut? Your pussy's so big, Sylvester Stallone left his career in there. God, you are a big, ghoulish woman. I'm talking to you, Carrot Top. Jesus. What happened to your face? <laughs> Good to see Snoop here. Snoop, uh... Snoop smoked so much hemp, he wants shit a rope. <laughs> Snoop, you're filled with toxins, you've killed people, and you've been banned from every country on the planet. You're like Chinese toothpaste. <laughs> and now, uh, guest of honor, Flav of Flav. This is really, this is exciting, Flav, it really is. This is an honor. I've, uh, I've never roasted an oily cadaver before. You're like a turd with teeth, look at yourself. I love the crown, you look like King Lear got trapped in a forest fire. You are one black mother You're like a skeleton wrapped in electrical tape. You look like Idi Amin after a three year crack binge on the sun. All right, Flav, well, you're the best, man. You're one of the most memorable people ever in the history of entertainment, and I love the Viking helmet. I guess, Brigitte, it's not the only big, cold Scandinavian thing you've stuck your head into. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>